Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. Today we're going to be talking about a gun that you've seen before, if you're a regular on this channel, a concept I call the Street Racer, which evolved from a gun given to me by a friend of mine that he had set up as his idea of the ultimate Street 1911, Carry 1911. Um, we disagreed on a number of critical points and eventually I modified the gun to better suit my particular tastes and interests and then those changed and I modified it again and then I modified it some more and to get to where we are today where the gun bears not really the least resemblance to its original form as you can see and um, it may be in its final form because I think I've done just about everything I can without taking it apart and putting a new gun under it. Fortunately, I very much like the results. Um, I do not like the Sig Sauer 9mm 1911 magazine I used in the shooting video today because I know Sig is a great company. I know they make great stuff. I bought a couple of these magazines uh, for my first 1911 project and wind up not using them because they just don't work as well as my cheap MechGar magazines. And this one has now decided to uh, start locking the slide back with a round still in the magazine. Some kind of European magic that I bought not of. Anyway, as you can see, this is not at all a normal looking 1911, and we're going to explore that on the desktop. So as you can see, the Street Racer is not at all a normal 1911. Um, some things aren't that far out there, like the bobtail, which is courtesy of my friend Pat, who encouraged me to ride rifle through his parts bin, and I did. Um, beaver tail grip safety, pretty normal. This may get a little more fitting, but it isn't bothering me, so I haven't really, it hasn't really been a priority. Long trigger with over travel stop screw, hand cut checkering here and here to improve the grip. Custom G10 grips. Nothing too out of the ordinary on the bottom half. It's up top where things start to get weird. Starting with the cutaway front of the slide to accommodate the porting in the barrel. Um, I used this on another project and I liked both the looks and the results, so I did it on this one. Um, on a bull barrel, this front part of the slide really isn't doing anything. So why go to all the trouble of cutting a port in it when I could just cut it away and it would look all cool in science fiction. And it works a treat. And then we get to the sight. So this site, it's a fiber optic with a trough. I fabricated this in my shop Sunday morning. Um, it's one of those things where I had this idea and I thought that can't be a good idea or someone would have done it. And of course, people have done a few similar things, but it's a trough with the fiber optic and it's an all in one site. And it is very fast, very intuitive and in 7 to 20 yards, it is quite acceptably accurate. Um, beyond that, I don't know because I haven't fired it at further than 20 yards. And uh, so that's what this is all about. It works. It works really well. There have been a couple of similar concepts in sites before, notably the gutter snipe, which everyone mentions. But what I always noticed with the gutter snipe being mounted at the rear of the slide it had a tendency to magnify aiming errors. So I thought mounting my sight at the front would uh, maybe alleviate that problem. I don't know, it works. And what's with this business, you ask? Somebody asked if that was to cock it. And while it does make it very easy to cock it, no, that's not what it's for. Um, I had this great big Novak cut back here. And I thought, well, the conventional thing to do would be to make a filler plug and just fill it in. Nah, 
let's do something weird. And I did, because I thought it would look cool, and I still think it looks cool. Having that great big detonics esque sweep almost up to the ejection port. I think it looks cool, gives the gun a whole sci-fi prop gun aesthetic that I find quite pleasing. And it is practical because it takes a significant amount of weight out of the slide and lower reciprocating mass is better, especially in a short gun like this. And it is easier to get good results shooting double taps with it now um, as a result of the weight reduction here and here. The porting doesn't hurt either, of course. Uh, the trigger has been interfered with. It now, uh, there is take up on it because this is a carry gun but the trigger pull is very light. Um, I haven't measured it recently, but I would guarantee it's under three pounds, which most people would find very light for a carry gun, but I'm me. And the reset is quite short. Even for a 1911, the reset is short, which is all to the good when shooting fast. And shooting fast is what this gun is all about, and thus the name the Street Racer, because my idea was sort of an ultimate carry 1911 with race gun elements as appropriate. And a gun that you can go straight, that I could go straight from my concealed carry holster into an action shooting international match and not be embarrassed by the performance of the gun. I'll probably be embarrassed by my own performance, but the gun will not let me down. And with everything but the SIGS magazine, it's super, super reliable, which a carry gun needs to be above all things. And uh, very happy with how it's come out. I love the aesthetic. I love the way it handles and shoots. And yes, it's heavy for a carry gun at 34 ounces. But um, I'm old, I got used to carrying guns when all guns were heavy, and I have a very good gun belt and holster, so that really doesn't bother me even after a full day. So all that's left at this point really is to refinish the gun. And I will be gun coating it because I can, I have everything I need. And uh, I am considering staying with the two-tone and maybe doing something a little less subtle than the light OD green and satin black. Um, I'm thinking about possibly a Magpul Stealth Gray on top and light satin gray on the bottom. I don't want to do the whole gun in light satin gray. I did that on the LDD2 one, excuse me, LDD1, and it looks great, but I've already done that. And I want this gun to be visually distinct from that one. Or alternately, I could do the whole thing in Magpul Stealth Gray and not worry about the two-tone effect, but I really think I'm going to go with the two-tone. So, let me know what you think in the comments, or if you have any ideas of your own that are not completely ludicrous. <laughs> like, you know, painting the Miami skyline on it. We're not going to mention any names. And uh, yeah, so there it is. The not at all normal, fully evolved street racer. Now this gun did provide me with a little bit of added excitement today. And I caught it on video. So let's have a look at that. Yep, I had a case blow out. Naturally, this is the only 9mm 1911 I have that doesn't have a full support chamber as it demonstrated today. And I brought the piece of brass out, no real harm was done. I showed it to the guys on the range who said, gosh, what do you think caused that? And I said it might have been because I've been reloading the same brass since 2016. Maybe it's time for some new brass. Anyway, so possibly in its final evolution, we'll see.
I'm not good at leaving things alone, as you may have noticed if you're a regular viewer. So, there it is, the Street Racer Evolved. So, shout out to my Patreons. Everything costs money, and your contributions help more than you know. If you'd like to help, there's a link to my Patreon account in the description below. I'd also like to thank channel benefactors like Rain City Shooting Center, uh, Leroy at Rain City Shooting, Shooting Center, um, and um, Leah Lovecraft, Pinto's Guns, and a lot of other people that have just been very helpful to the channel. So thank you all for all of your assistance. And uh, that's about it for this time. If you like the video, please hit the like button below. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe. I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.